Right, several people have been asking me about various different tools I use on both my lathes and have been asking what tools I'd choose if I was new to engineering and had just bought a small lathe. And it's um, quite surprising when you're starting out or you've just bought a new lathe, you don't need a great deal of tools to start with. Um, you need some drills, a centre drill, a part off, and a nice set of carbide insert tooling like this. And I'm really pleased that the Chinese have produced these tools and offered them at such low prices. Um, many of the branded types are, are very expensive and often out of the range of the home machinist starting out. They are very good quality. I've done everything I've needed to do using these tools. The inserts last well, and this is the first insert tool that I bought for my Chinese lathe about seven years ago, and it's still as good as the day I bought it. And I've made many hundreds of different components with this tool. Now, one of the reasons um, why this uh, tool set is so cost effective is that all these different tools take the same insert. The DCMT 070204. It's a very common insert, easy to get hold of. A packet of 10 only costs about £6 now, and I find them that they last very well on all different types of materials. So you can get the set on eBay, and I'll put the links below. The set comprises of um, three different turning tools and one nice size uh, boring bar, the keys to take the uh, torque screw out and change the insert around or change it all together and it also comes with 10 of the actual inserts. And now for those that are new to engineering or lathe work I'll do a quick demonstration of each of these tools and the uh, various different cuts they can make. Um, this is the quick change tool holder from the quick change tool post. This set here is 12 millimeter shank, which is about the biggest this tool holder can take. And um, if you have the Myford lathe, you have to get these in eight millimeter or 10 millimeter at the maximum or larger ones and mill them down so you can actually achieve the center height. But I'm using the Chinese mini lathe and this is the first tool that I'm going to use. I set this one in the tool holder at a slight angle out from the tool holder and I do that to give more clearance on the front of the tool when I'm facing off or coming up to a shoulder. So do that one up nice and tight. And when you're setting the carbide tools or any tools in the lathe, you want the least amount of overhang um, you can have for whatever job you're doing. And that saves the tool from vibrating or chattering as we call it and giving bad finishes. So when first setting up the tool, the first thing you need to do is get it on centre height. You can eye the tool up on the end of a piece of bar or you can use a small concentric pointer like this one. Put that in the chuck and bring the tool up to the end of that one to see that it's dead on centre. If it's not, you loosen the nut on the top of the quick change tool post and alter this one until you've got it on centre height, then lock up the top nut and every time you put that back into the quick change tool post it'll be bang on center so now I'm going to be using a piece of mild steel and mild steel isn't the best of materials to get a good finish on so this will be a good test do that one up nice and tight in the chuck and I'm going to use about 750 rpm and I'm first going to face the front of the bar off. And then 
turn the diameter. Also these um, types of turning tools are great for cutting out a section like this or back turning um, to cause an angle or a, a deburr in the actual back of a flange. So now I'm going to use the turning tool that cuts in the opposite direction and I've got to set the centre height of that one and this is another method you put the tool onto the tool post put a six inch rule between the workpiece and that tool and wind the tool carefully in onto the um, six inch rule it's best to use an old one so you don't mark your best one up. And if that rule is dead vertical held in that position like that, then the tool is bang on centre height. If the tool is low, the rule will come over at the top like this. And if the tool is too high, it will be in the opposite direction. And that's a great way of actually getting the tool bang on centre. That one is a little bit high. So I'll let that down a bit. And that's bang on centre. And then lock the nut on the top. And after you've done that, you want to take the tool off the tool post, put it back on again, and just retest. And that one's still on centre. So this tool is actually great for turning towards the back of the lathe. Um, facing off the back of flanges and um, things like that. So the next tool is this one here and this is really good for doing V grooves or decorative grooves in both the diameter and the um, component face.
and I've just changed the tool around in the tool holder And now I've just come back to the first tool I was using again because this type of tool is great for turning um, small diameter spindles like this between centres. So I'm going to be using the um, power feed on the um, mini lathe. Um, if you find that the gears are noisy on the mini lathe at the back um, when you're using the lead screw, cover the plastic gears with silicon lubricant grease this won't affect the plastic, but it will quiet the gears right down. And that again is a piece of mild steel and you can actually see what an excellent finish that tool produces. So now I come to the boring bar of the carbide insert set. Um, this is an excellent uh, boring bar and I'll show you why in a minute. It has some graduated marks on the side here in metric so you can actually um, see how far the tool is sticking out from the end of the tool post and give an idea of the depth and this one has a flat on the top so that when you put it into the tool holder and screw the um, allen bolts down to lock it in the holder it will be on the exact angle the cutting angle that it should be and you can see um, from the front of the tool post there that it's slightly down and that's correct with the flat um, parallel to the actual top of the tool holder. So on this one I've changed the jaws on the lathe for the workpiece I'm going to uh, use. You can also use um, a live centre like this and put it in the jaws and do that one up and use that for the centering of the tools. I've set that one already and it's spot on. So this is a mild steel billet that I um, drilled out earlier. And I'll show you those drills in operation in a minute. And this tool again, having the same insert, is excellent for good finishes in the bores. And it's also great for plunging in at the back for doing thread undercuts or relief at the back. And on the mini lathe with these tools, if you find that the shank is too long um, and you haven't got enough travel back, 
you can always saw off what you're not going to use. And that was a demonstration of um, doing an undercut in the bore there. Um, it's a great tool, excellent angles on it and you can take nice size cuts and actually do that plunging work. It's great for um, thread undercuts. So you can see there that the tool has produced a nice um, deep undercut um, at the back of the bore there. And this is the type of undercut you would have at the back of a screw thread. You can also use the tool for facing off um, the back of a bore or facing off the front. And that also produces some excellent finishes on this mild steel. So you can see why I recommend this um, excellent insert tool set. And if you look after the tools, they'll last a lifetime. And now I come to this excellent Imperial HSS drill set that I got off of eBay. And it's eight um, drills ranging from 9 sixteenths inch to one inch and for larger drills like this um, these are one of the best sets you can get because they're shortened um, they're great for smaller lathes and also they have um, three flats ground on the shank um, which go into the jaws the jaws locate on those flats and actually stop the drill from spinning in the chuck and they're excellent quality HSS and have been ground really well and I've used these on um, all different types of steels and they cut really well. So I'll give a quick demonstration of the HSS drills in action. I've centre drilled the billet and I'm starting off with the smallest drill and that's how you're meant to use these drills. You're meant to start off with the smallest one and work your way up through the drills um, until you drill the largest um, size that you want to drill. And I've got my mini lathe headstock gear in the low gear. I have a reduction gear set on my lathe which has extra torque um, but that gives slower speeds. The top speed of my lathe is about um, 1600 which is perfectly adequate. But like I said, it's got extra torque for larger drills.
And you can get those reduction um, gear and belt sets from America on eBay. So now I'll go to the next size up. And always remember when drilling with um, large drills to check that you're not going to hit the jaws at the back when you um, drill right the way through, if you are drilling right the way through. And um, you do that by um, putting the billet in the jaws like this. You can do this check. Just slightly opening the jaws, taking the billet out and just advance the um, drill through the chuck like this and just check that it's not going to actually clash with those jaws that there's plenty of clearance and if you come to a drill size where you find that there isn't enough clearance um, at the back and you want to drill right the way through you drill through halfway first turn around the billet and drill through the other half so you don't actually break through the back. So this is the next size up and I've done that check and it's perfectly normal um, when you're using drills like this um, for there to be a bit of vibration when the um, drill picks up on the um, other hole. So there we have it, um, a great HSS tool or drill set and well worth the money.